More German American Experience by Tolzman, copyright 2000. So we're learning about Turker. Turker could be the first German here in America. Turker. According to the legend, Turker was the first German to reach America. Furthermore, he is credited with having discovered grapes on the new land and having named this new land Vinland. So Turker named Vinland, Wineland. I guess there's a place called Wineland. <laughs> and uh, Newfoundland. It's in Canada, so I, I'm, I'm ignorant of Canada, I'll be honest. Uh, Norse Saga provides us with the following account of this legendary first German in America and his discovery. So, here's an account of Turker. It was discovered one evening that one of their company was missing, and this proved to be Turker, the German. Leif was sorely troubled by this, for Turker had lived with Leif and his father for a long time and had been very devoted to Leif when he was a child. Leif severely reprimanded his companions and prepared to go in search of him, taking twelve men with him. They had proceeded but a short distance from the house where, when they were met by Turker, whom they received most cordially. Leif observed at once that his foster father was in lively spirits. Leif addressed him and asked, Where art thou so belated, foster father mine, and astray from the others? In the beginning, Turker, uh, Turker spoke for some time in German, rolling his eyes and grinning, but they could not understand him, and after a time he addressed him in northern tongue. I did not go much further than you, and I have something of novelty to relate. I have found vines and grapes. Is this indeed true, foster father, at said leaf? Of sort, certain, certainty it is true, quoth he. For I was born where there is no lack of either grapes or vines. They slept the night through, and on the morrow, Leif said to his shipmates, We will now divide our labors, and each day we will either gather grapes or cut vines and fell trees, so as to obtain a cargo of these for my ship. A cargo sufficient for the ship was cut, and when the ship spring came, they made their ship ready and sailed away. And from its products, Leif gave the, la the land a name and called it Wineland. So... I don't know if it's Wineland or Vinland now. Wineland or Vinland, but Turker. The early Norse settlements established by Ericsson were short-lived, but pointed to the future interest Europe would have for America. Little is known by Turker other than the above details that can be extracted from Germanic legends and sagas. Although there appears to be solid ground for the fact that there were North, Norse settlements in America prior to Columbus, there is no evidence that Turker actually existed other than a reference to him in Germanic legend, and it must therefore be assumed that he is a mythical character until such time that his actual existence can be documented. On the other hand, the notion that Turker might, may have actually ex existed should not be totally rejected, so perhaps the most that can be said is that there is a Germanic legend uh, that he is the first German in America. The Beginnings of the Age Ever since 1295 when Marco Polo returned to Italy with immense wealth after having spent years at the court of Kublai Khan as well as in China, Japan, and various East Indian islands. There is a great interest, especially among navigators, in finding a water route to the El Dorado or the City of Gold, uh, which had been described by Marco Polo. However, the greatest obstacle in the way of any maritime exploration was the lack of any method by which the navigator could tell his ship's location when it was out of sight of land. The problem was not solved until the, the German mathematician Johannes Müller, uh, Religio Montanus of Königsberg, calculated and published his Euphoremides, or Nautical Almanac, in 1474. This was based on his astronomical observations and consisted of a collection of tables showing the present state of the heavens for everyday use of the year at noon. Another German innovation of great value and use for navigation was the astrolabe. The astrolabe. Uh, or labe. The astrolabe. The astrolabe of Martin Beham of Nuremberg. This was an instrument used for determining the altitude of the sun or the stars when at sea. There have been reports of various pre-Columbian discoveries of America, including that of the arrival of a German explorer 20 years before Columbus in 1473. Didrik Penning, a German in the service of Christian I of Denmark, led an expedition in the search of a passage to the Far East and apparently reached Greenland, Labrador, and perhaps also Newfoundland. 
Pinning, however, was not aware of the fact that he had landed in the New World and did not follow up on this expedition due to the inability of the Danes to finance su such expeditions. However, in 1478, he was appointed to the Danish governor of Iceland. However, or also reports on his trip remained state secrets at the time and were not publicized, so his discovery remained unknown. A quick glance at a world globe reveals how close Greenland is to Iceland and that once in Greenland the voyage to Newfoundland would not have been all that difficult. This northern route therefore was one that could be tra tra traversed as if by stepping stones from Iceland to Greenland and varied from the Atlantic over the sea route to Central America which was reached by Columbus. In 1481, the King of Portugal established a border commission of scientists to examine the different nautical instruments, almanacs, calculations, and maps of the period, and to report on the utility. One of the five persons appointed to this body was Martin Beham, B-E-H-A-I-M, a student of Johannes Mueller. M-U-L-L-E-R. He also belonged to the subcommittee charged with discovering some sure method of navigating the seas according to the altitude of the sun and constructing mathematical and nautical instruments suitable for this purpose. Um, so skipping on. Although Germans laid the foundation for discovery in the areas of cosmo cosmography and cartography, they played a minor role in Columbus's discovery of 1492 as only a few accompanied Columbus on this voyage. However, Germans did play a major role in spreading information regarding this monumental event. And this was due to their predominance in the field of printing. In 1455, Johannes Gutenberg had, completing, had completed his first great work in the effects of the invention of movable type were widespread throughout Europe, where in almost every case the printing press was introduced by German craftsmen. By 1600, over 100 works had been published in Germany that dealt with or mentioned the New World. The Gutenberg Printing Press Revolution. Printing press was developed so therefore ideas could spread rapidly and Columbus discovered America and the Gutenberg Printing Press Revolution told all of Europe about it and started the mass migration. So the Germans did not discover America, but they made it popular for white folks to skedaddle and get the hell out of Europe. The, the over militarized warlike barbarians <laughs> the Huns right even though the Huns were Mongolians but I, I'm not sure about um, Attila he's a Mongolian they say but he kind of he kind of looks European to me uh, at least the picture on Wikipedia so by 1600, over 100 works had been published in Germany that dealt with or mentioned the New World. Across Europe, printing presses were usually not without German printers. In 1493, Stefan Planck, P-L-A-N-C-K, and Rome planted the letter of Columbus, Der Columbus Brief, which was called a little book or pamphlet since it consisted of a few pages. This was the first publication about the New World. It was found its way to Anton Koberger in Nuremberg, which included it in his 1497 edition of Nuremberg Chronicle, the first book mentioned in the Discovery. Okay. German miners, Charles X, Charles V, I don't know, okay, first, the first German settlers in America. The first German settlers, the Jamestown Germans. So this is after the lost colony of Roanoke, Jamestown, the first successful colony based on raising tobacco. Tobacco saved Jamestown. It's what this country was founded on. It's what Kentucky was founded on. Um, the ground is fertile. We raise uh, burly tobacco. And it's one of the few things we're good at. And we have all the equipment to be able to find a replacement crop if we are getting too many tobacco, cheap tobacco imports. So, the first permanent colony in the part of the New World that became the United States was the settlement at Jamestown, Virginia. U.S. history is usually conceived of as beginning there, and this is also where the beginning of German-American history can be found. 
On or around October 1st, 1608, eight Germans arrived on the ship Mary and Margaret at Jamestown, Virginia, the colony which had been established in 1607 by the London Company of Virginia. These first German settlers were glassmakers and carpenters. Altogether, there were 70 passengers on board the ship, included an unspecified number of poles. But they and the Germans had been contracted by the London Company to produce pitch, tar, glass, millace, paneling, and soap ashes. The history of these first German settlers is recorded and documented in Captain John Smith's The Greatest History of Virginia, New England, and the Summer Isles with the names of the adventurers, planners, and governors from their first beginnings in uh, 1584 to this present 1624. <laughs> so John Smith, man, he wrote a history book. It should be noted that Smith calls the Germans Dutch, as was commonly done at the time. Interesting. So according to Don Heinrich Tolzman, uh, Germans were originally called Dutch. And it goes on to say something about Germans called themselves Deutsch. So Deutschland is German land, the fatherland, right? It's the homeland. The Deutschland is the boat that my German ancestors uh, sailed on, which eventually crashed uh, in the icy cold uh, seas between... England and, and Germany. So, uh, Deutschland it used to be called Dutch. I did not know this. The confusion of Dutch and German arose among the English speaking pop population from the fact that the Germans called themselves Deutsch. Also, the Netherlands was part of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation until the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648, and the Germans of the Lower Rhine and the Dutch were therefore similar in background. The Germans of the Lower Rhine and the Dutch were similar in background. The three of the Germans who arrived in 1608 were carpenters. The rest were glass makers. In addition, there was a Swiss-German settler as well. So the total number of ethnic Germans at Jamestown in 1608 was nine. They were in Jamestown 12 years prior to the arrival of the more known English pilgrims at Plymouth Rock in New England. As these first settlers were employees of the London Company and the proceeds of their labor went to the company, Glassmakers had uh, been especially sought as the company was in need, not only of glassware, uh, also of craftsmen who could teach this craft locally when the Germans arrived. The conditions were poor. More than half of the settlers who had arrived in 1607 had perished. With uh, the new arrivals, there were now approximately 120 persons. Smith was apparently not overjoyed at the new arrivals and felt that the colony should establish itself before obtaining more new colonists. As for the hiring of the Poles and Dutchmen to make pitch tar, glass mills, and soap ashes, the, when the country is replenished with people and the necessaries would have done well, but to send them and 70 more without victuals to work was not so well advised nor considered as it should have been done. Um, yeah, so the first German settlers. We were here in Jamestown. Germans were here in Jamestown. There's other stuff. I'll I'll get to them later. But I'm going to read the stuff that's marked off. Um, only two, three pages. Okay. Settlement patterns. On the frontier. The Western movement on the frontier got underway before the American Revolution. Just as in the settlement of the colonies, the Germans played an important part in the opening of the Midwest and the Far West. Many German pioneers were located directly on the frontier that ran from Maine to Georgia. They were accustomed to dealing with the Indians. They knew the topography of the country, and they were ready to trek into the wilderness. The first German settlers in Kentucky came from the Valley of Virginia and from the western counties of North and South Carolina. In the Valley of Virginia, the Germans were numerous. They even exceeded the Irish. In the Carolinas, too, they appear to have been as plentiful as the Scotch-Irish. The Scotch Many Germans also came from the Midland counties of Pennsylvania. The German pioneers were a sturdy lot. Their women working in the fields and woods together with the men. So that's a tradition I see in the Gripsover family. The German pioneers were a sturdy lot. Their women were working in the fields and the woods and the fields together with the men. They're always considered highly desirable settlers by colonial governors. George Washington had plans to settle Germans on his 10,000 acres south of the Ohio River. So George Washington had plans to settle the Germans on his 10,000 acres south of the Ohio River. He even considered sending an agent to Germany 
to recruit to recruit settlers to whom he would promise free transportation to the Ohio and four years of free rental. However, the Revolutionary War put an end to his plans. So the Ohio Valley, um, and more about Kentucky and Daniel Boone and the German American connection. All right, coming up. Germans in America.